So, my presentation is about Thomson's cathode ray tube experiment. So this is my table of contents. And this is the background. So first of all, Greeks believe that everything is made out of fire, water, air, and earth. And then after that, John Dalton thought that, no, it's not. He thought that everything is made out, made out of really tiny stuff. And he made the, he first made the idea of atom. So this is John Dalton's atomic model, which is solid sphere. And he strongly believed that atom cannot be divided into different particles. And the limitation at the time was, is it made with other particles? Does it actually not have other particles or something like that? Because he, at that time, he didn't really prove that atom cannot be divided, but he kind of believed that it is. And the, and the other limitation is, how does it make chemical changes even if the atom doesn't have anything inside of it? So if, if atom doesn't have any other particles inside of it, it should not able to it should not able to make chemical changes. So this one and this one was the question and the limitation at the time. So this is Thompson's exper experiment and result. So this is cassette and anod anode plate. And this is the cathode ray tube, which is which has no air inside of it. If it does have air inside of it, then it does not work. So it does not have air inside of it. And there's cassette and anode plate. So when you place them like this, the cassette plate just made the ray and it goes like this straight up. And then after that, he put it the positively charged metal plates and negatively charged metal plates in both sides. And then the straight ray just curve up into the positively charged metal plates. And which proved the ray contains the negatively charged particles. I'll explain um, I'll explain later why it concludes as it does have the negative charged particle inside of it. And this is, and then after that experiment, he put it the U-shaped magnets instead of using positively and negatively charged metal plates. And then the ray just curved to the different way depends on where the magnet placed on. And it also proved that the ray contains the particles, which is negatively charged, and they called sub they called it a subatom. So the experiment's conclusion. The experiment's conclusion has the ray, which is made out of atom, has negatively charged particles, which is electron. And he figured out the ray's particle half mass, which is about 1,000 times smaller mass than hydrogen atom, which was the smallest atom, smallest mass atom. And he figured it out with the mass to mass to ratio, um, mass to ratio equation. And this one is my analogy. So I'm gonna explain why it concludes out with it had the atom has the negatively charged particles with this electron. So the magnets. My analogy is magnets. So think about it. Magnets attract to different poles, like S to N and N to S. 
but like magnets doesn't attract to the same poles. It doesn't attract to as and as and an and as. So for this experiment, it's kind of like that. The negatively charged particles attract to positively charged metal plates, and the negatively charged negative charged no positively charged particles attracts to negative to negatively charged metal plates and the it the ray contained the negatively charged particles so it lives up to curve up into the positively charged metal plates so that is my analogy and i my conclusion was it is so Thompson's used the different materials for this and this. And even though he used the different materials like copper or iron or something like that, it still ends up with the same electrons inside of it. So in concludes with all materials have electrons. And I had a question about does it have its own chemical property? Because if it it does have its own chemical property, then it should be like the different electrons for the old materials. So this one was my question. And I basically my conclusion is atom is made out of tiny little particles and there's electrons. So this is the atomic structure of JJ Thompson's, which is called plum pudding model. He figured out, he disapproved that, he disapproved um, John Dalton's idea, which is atom cannot be divided. Instead, he proved that there is an electron inside of it, so it can be divided. And atom basically had electron inside of it, but he knew the atom is neutral. Atom should be neutral because in the natural world that there ain't no things that are not neutral. If there is one, then it's not, it doesn't make sense at all. It, it does make sense, but it's not stable. So he saw the atom is neutral thing. So, and then he figured out the electron is inside of it. So to balance it, he put it the cloud-like positively charged particles, which is called protons. And the limitation of Thomson's experiment. So he, he figured out atom, atoms particles have electrical properties, but he didn't know exact quantity, which is number or mass. He didn't know how many of electrons are inside of the atom. And he didn't know exact mass, he just guessed it with about 10,000 times. And also, the other limitation is he thought that the atom is neutral, so he put it the positively charged particles around the electrons. But actually, he didn't actually prove that the protons or with this kind of shape, he just guessed it. It can, it can, the possible way is like, it can be like the po protons are here and the electrons are orbiting around it. Or like it can be like electro the individual electrons inside of the atom and the other individual positively charged particles, which is proton inside of it. So he just guessed it and it wasn't clear. So he didn't know which form it is. So this is my bibliography citation. And thank you for the listening.